Man, I told you guys this Panther platform on these cars are pretty much bulletproof. Well, that's not the case today. You guys want to join us on Tech Garage today as we find out why this Lincoln's ticking like a time bomb. Welcome to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Man, am I eating some crow. I told you guys this Panther platform was bulletproof, and boy, not today. This thing is knocking, rattle, and pinging. I'm not even sure, but Dave, man, what'd you find? Well, <laughs> sounds like it's ready to take off, John. <laughs> I was listening all around here and uh, finally came up with... Oh. We got some email questions right. from last week. Let's All not right. give it away. And a couple of them, we asked them to write in and see what it was. And we got some really good guesses. And if you want to send yours in, send it to feedback at techgarage.tv. We love hearing from you. Somebody said an engine knock. Good one. Good guess. Uh, good guess. Thank God it's not. Oh, no. It would have been a rod. And as old as this engine is, that means just a new engine altogether. That's expensive. And it would have been humiliating because I tell them how great this engine is. <laughs> You've been very embarrassed <laughs> and you lost a lot of money on that deal. Belt tensioner and pulley, good one. They tick and rattle all the time. Here's what I thought it was, Dave, and this, this guy was pretty good here. Chain slap or chain tensioner. That could be someone that's watched the show before because we had that a few seasons ago on Tech Garage. It sounded just like that, but that's yep. not, that's, I don't think that's what it was. I don't think that's what it was either, Dave, but I guess you're gonna have to reveal it at this point. Well, Aaron, Eric, Becky, and Raj emailed us and they were guessing the fan and I think that's where it is as well. I think the rattle was a dead giveaway. Yeah, you yeah. saw it shimmy a little bit? <laughs> Woo, well, I suspected I, that, of course, but when I listened to it, that, that I think confirmed it, so we're going to take yep. a look at that fan. And I didn't under the hood, and, and also the uh, AC was blowing warm, so I had my AC gauges ready, and you know, you had your stethoscope, so you're looking pretty cool like a doctor, but we always find it with the stethoscope, go around, isolate the area, great, great move. The coolant fan, it could be, you know, it, it seems to be fine, but I'll go over here and I'm going to unplug it and so it doesn't run because these things can run at any time. Come over here and kind of, the bearings don't seem to be bad on there. It's not flopping around. So I don't know. We're going to have to go a little deeper, Dave, to find right. out. And there's really nothing out. to this one. I think I got the right size here. We're All right. Go. We'll take the fan out. I'm so glad that it wasn't uh, something with a rod or something in the engine itself. That would have been a disaster. Yeah. It's something like the fan, John, actually easy to replace if, this, if it is, in fact, the fan. It it's is. It's not that expensive. So. No, it's not bad, and this is pretty cool. It's a whole modular one, and uh, I got the power steering reservoir over here on my side. I'm hoping we can just tuck it out of the way, and that's yeah. the coolant reservoir yeah. right there. So we got a couple options. We can disconnect the hoses or just give it a little oomph there. That there, may be a good yeah. enough get there. Set I'm aside. Just, I'm not sure if you can get to your bottom bolt down there. Can you? I'll hold it over for I you. Can. If you can. I can. Okay, if you can, I'll leave it there for yeah. you. I got one down here on the side. We'll get that pulled out, and then we should be able to bring it on out of there. I already... Yeah, the clip for the lower radiator hose is already off, so we're fine there. I know you've been bragging about this vehicle. What do you love about it, man? I just, man, taxi cabs, cop cars. I mean, you know, 200,000 miles, 300,000 miles. You know, I drive old Project M&M, the Mercury Marquis. That's my favorite car in the whole world. So. I love just gliding down the road, and this is the perfect uh, car for that. I don't want to work on cars, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought John would be a sports car guy when I started working on this show. <laughs> I found out John just likes to cruise and take yeah, it nice man. and easy. Like Come on, it's car. like the carpet installers. They got the worst carpet in town. <laughs> Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> boy, John, work smarter, not harder. Exactly. Oh, there we go. Mine's coming out. Okay, so pull that in out first and see if okay. I can get this out. Let's see. Oh, this is going to work. This is going to work. There we go. Look at that. Come on, one more. You got yours and tip it that way. Oh, we go. Let's see. What do we got? Oh, we got nothing. Oh, uh -oh. hold on. Oh, there, yeah, look. Bingo. You guys see that at home? I mean, what a racket. What a scary racket. But really, Dave, <laughs> four bolts, yeah. a little stethoscope, rockauto.com. See what we find out. John, I. By the sound of it, I thought this was something terminal, but I'm glad it's just a fan. Yeah, me too. You know, we're on our way to fixing this Lincoln. But you know, Dave, we got some of the coolest demos on the planet. And we have a fan motor back there. So I'm going to go dig it out, set it up. And you guys take a short break. We'll show you everything about a fan motor, how it works. When we come back with more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is brought to you by Clamp Tight, the clamp making tool. 
and by rockauto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. Well, welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, here's the mystery culprit that was doing all the knocking, Dave. And man, there it is right there. It's cracked. And if you get some velocity or speed, you can see what was going on. I mean, it's not good. Any fan's going to vibrate when, when it rotates. And that's why you have weight on a ceiling fan because it does the same thing. And of course, a little bit of fluctuation translates to a lot of motion out here and it's a lot of racket. Yeah, you think about that, that's gonna absolutely do that and cause the problem. I like this one because it's got the module or the computer built right in here, Dave, rockauto.com, same thing. Listen, just get the whole module fan assembly and be done. Rock Auto is great for that, giving the whole assembly. That way you don't have to match parts, different components of a system from different manufacturers, Rock Auto is going to sell you a package, sell you an assembly that's going to work together and talk together and work perfectly. And Dave, we promised you guys one of the coolest demos on the planet, and here it is. Here's a fan system. And Dave, you know, a lot of people are under the misconception, I look under the hood, it's not running, and it's supposed to be running. Maybe not. There's some criteria it has to meet to do it. Educate us on that. You've got to meet a few conditions. One, when you run the air conditioner, it's going to run the fan because it's pulling cool air off the condenser and it's going to put it into the cabin of your car. So we're going to turn on the ignition here. Once we hit the AC, there you go, fan Damn. turns on, running a full blast there. That's a perfect scenario. I mean, think about that. A lot of people are coming in with the air not working good and they don't realize yeah. their engine's pegged at 252 <laughs> because the radiator's right in front of that. So that's usually the first indication you have a coolant fan problem, that AC starts going out and you have high temperature in that engine. You got it. So you mentioned it, high temperature in the engine. We're gonna turn it up here and we're up to 115 Celsius. It's gonna kick the fan on the coolant. It's gonna vary from vehicle to vehicle depending on the size of the engine, uh, how warm it needs to get before the fan kicks on. Absolutely. If your fans aren't running, don't worry about it. The computer has to see a bunch of stuff happening for it to run, and I'll show you exactly what's going on. At Tech Garage, here's what we do, man. We go to the schematic. That's the big, big, big deal here at Tech Garage. So you can actually see it right up here. And this is super important. So I want to spend a little time on a schematic here. So we're going to go down the right side over here. And you can see I have 12 volts down the right side. That's a heavy amp 12 volt. That's actually the fan circuit. It just goes through a relay down to the fan and then the fan's grounded. So that's 12 volts, but it's a heavy amp 12 volts. Keep that in mind for a second. Let's go over to the other side. This is an actual control circuit. This is 12 volts as well. Exactly the same 12 volts. The difference, low amp, control side circuit. Watch, going down here to the computer. Now Dave showed you, if you actually turn the air condition on, the computer sees that, bam, goes ahead and grounds this relay, allows the fan to run. Dave said the vehicle speed, the temperature, coolant temperature plays a part. Computer sees that, bam, grounds the fan, pulls that in, lets it run, all right? So vehicle speed, air conditioning, coolant temperature, all that stuff plays a factor into this control side, then grounding, letting the 12 volts, the relay will eat it, create a magnetic field all the way through here and pull that in and allow that 12 volts to go through. Now here's the problem. It's just kind of common. Everybody finds the first 12 volts here on this brown wire D and jumps over to E and tries to run the fan. Well, if you do that, you're really well going to maybe fry this computer. That could be an $800 computer. You don't want to do that. If you want to make sure your fans are running or you want to jump a relay, I'm going to show you how to do it in a minute, but we're going to jump the high amp side, A to E over here, and we're just going to bypass the relay and send it down to it. Never jump the low amp side to the high amp side. Jump it from high to high, Dave, and you know that, but this is very important to go ahead and demo it for them, right? You got it. We're going to use a voltmeter here. Yep. On our coolant fan. Oops, sorry, Johnny. That's all right. Go ahead. Fire that oh, jig up. up. We'll go to volts, DC volts. volts. There you go. You got it? Uh, yep. And what we'll do here is we'll go ahead, I'll unplug the relay and kind of demo what I was showing you. This is a fan relay, and on our fan relay, I'm gonna show you there's 12 volts in two places. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the air on, jack the temperature up so the computer would go ahead and feed that 12 volts to the relay. And Dave, I'm gonna go to the big control side right here, and if you just go to the middle one there to ground, I'll come up to the meter so we can see it all. Bam, all right, so there's 12 volts. We have our 12 volts right there. Beautiful, so hold that tight, Dave, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the control side and hit that, and there's 12 volts there too. Mm. So you got a 50-50 shot. If you're going to Vegas and you wanna pick 12 volts, don't do it, get right. a schematic. <laughs> <laughs> no gambling when it comes to electric. No, no that. gambling like that. So right now we know the computer's at least feeding the 12 volts to those two sides. That's super important, we're good there. Now, if we wanna jump the fan and see if the fan's gonna run, well, Dave, if you take this jumper wire right here, and we go to the, let's see, I'm gonna go right to the heavy amp side, right. and just that easy, we're running the fan. So 
that's going to actually show exactly what's going on. Now we're using a fused jumper wire. Use a fused jumper wire. Yeah. Goodness gracious, you're not going to fry that computer, you'll blow that fuse. That's the way to do it, Dave. Still a whole lot more from Tech Garage still to come. We've got a Nissan Quest van as part of our Keep It or Crush It segment. That's right, we're trying to flip some vehicles. Looking at this van, it just so happens we've got a radiator and a fan issue, John. So we're gonna address that when we come back to Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. One of our favorite segments this year is something we like to call keep it or crush it. That's right, you know, new cars are hard to find and they're hard to afford these days. Same thing with used cars, it's hard to find a good one and hard to find a good one you can afford. So we're finding some good deals on vehicles, deciding whether we want to flip them or get rid of them. We found this 07 Nissan Quest, Josh. Uh, it was kind of rough looking, frankly. But we started to look at it mechanically and decided it's a good running vehicle once we brought it up into the shop. Yes, but it's on the inside that counts when you're hauling a family around, not necessarily what it looks like on the outside. So. Function over form, especially these right. days when things are hard to afford. And this is uh, going to make a nice vehicle for somebody. There was one problem, though, that we found when we got it up into the upper shop. Yeah, once we parked it, you could see it was dripping from the radiator. You can't really fix the radiator. You can try, but it's going to end up leaking again. So we just decided let's go ahead and replace the radiator. Now we just happen to have a donor vehicle, another Nissan Quest, so we took the radiator from that, put it in this one, we'll tell you how we did that. As a backup, we also got one from rockauto.com, just in case we were to find this one was gonna leak as well. Now, replacing the radiator can be complicated, but well, wasn't so bad in this Nissan Quest, Josh. No, not at all. The Nissan engineers really made it easy on us, but before we get to that surprise, the first thing we did was we had to remove the battery tray, took the battery out, disconnected the battery terminals so that we could get that radiator fan out. The radiator fan was pretty easy. We had two bolts on top and just a couple tabs on the bottom, so we took those two fan bolts out. We were able to wiggle it out and pull it out once we took off the upper radiator hose. Well, thanks to the engineers at Nissan for making it super easy with those clips, Josh. Yeah, that was a big surprise. A lot of times you have to take off that upper radiator support. They made it where you could just take those clips off so you could get the radiator out. But before we could do that, I had to disconnect the transmission lines at the bottom of the radiator. Once we did that, the radiator pulled straight up and out. Good policy to take everything slowly because you, you, there might be some other hose or wire connected. So make sure you take your time on jobs like this and any job when you're working with your vehicle. Next, the donor vehicle, we grab the radiator out of that, same process to remove that one, and right. we started to put it into this Nissan. Yeah, we just reversed the procedure, slid the radiator down. And you had to install the fans, Josh. We didn't explain unclipping it, but that wasn't that hard. Right, yeah, if you look at the fans, you start to pull on it, like you were saying, just making sure there's no wires. You discover there's two wire connectors you have to disconnect from each fan. So we definitely need to put those back in as we install the fans, so our fans will run when we get the thing cranked up and going down the road. And battery had to go back in, so we used the same battery that was there, it was still good, and we had to fill and burp the system. Right, when you fill the system back up with coolant, you're gonna have air pockets, so we let the engine run for a while, get it to operating temperature, and then once the system was burped, we were good to go. All right, once that was ready to go, we needed to put a new starter in this. It wasn't starting on its own very easily. It was kind of intermittent start there, so well, we it was starting for a while and slowly, and then it just wouldn't start at all, so yeah, we did some diagnosis. and. That's what ended up being an issue. So. Well, that takes care of most of the mechanical stuff. Next week, we're gonna move on to this interior. And let me tell you, this thing is nasty. This was clearly used by a family for a long time, but we're gonna clean it up and you'll be surprised at the transformation. We'll be right back with more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com when we return. Don't go anywhere. Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is brought to you by Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radios since 1977. And by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Last segment, we got the fans back into the Nissan van. We also got the radiator all hooked up. During the break, we put coolant in. That's probably the most important step. And we found the right coolant on rockauto.com. Check your owner's manual. This is a specific coolant just meant for Asian vehicles. And of course, Rock Auto had that. Tom, we also found a code in the van and it said airbag. And uh, we looked a little further and realized it came down to this. It's a multifunction switch. 
And uh, we thought we were sunk. We thought it was a dealer only item and we'd be in big trouble, but lo and behold, Rock Auto had it. You guys are amazing. Well, thanks. So, yeah, so there's a couple little things you wanted to show us about this about this piece. Yeah, the, the airbag and the horn button rotate with the steering wheel, and what they connect to is this clock spring that maintains the electrical connections. You, you want to be careful to uh, leave this little lock on here that keeps this from rotating, because if, if it rotates too far, then when you put the steering wheel on, you, you'll tear the wiring out of this if it's not lined up where it should be. So, so leave this on until you uh, are, are ready to install it. And, and if it, it's if somebody's taking it off and rotated it, then rotate it carefully all the way one way till you feel some tension and, and count the number of rotations and then rotate it the other way and count the rotations and then do half the number of rotations so it's centered again. So once again, when you put that steering wheel on, you don't tear the wiring inside. That's a good tip. And lots of good tips on rockauto.com as well. Some helpful sure. videos and things. We also found uh, some things you, you can't find at your local parts store. Door handles like this, for, for example. Yeah, um, or at a junkyard, it'll be rusted out or missing or... Right, so your so. best bet is go to rockauto.com and you can, you can find that with no problem. And also with Rock Auto, you're not getting just some generic parts, you're getting a lot of the OEM parts that come from the manufacturer, Tom. Right, yeah, we have name brands and we have the, the brands that there were original equipment on a lot of vehicles. rockauto.com has all the parts your car will ever need. They have all the parts we need for our Nissan. All right, all right, this is Garage Ed, and we are talking about compressors. Where do we start? Well, the clutch, of course. The clutch engages and disengages the compressor, so you don't have air conditioning all the time. You have to push the button when you want it. Now, really cool, I can show it to you in action here. So what's happening is the belt's driving this pulley right here. Now, you can see the top one's not moving. This is actually engaged with the compressor and the piston, so when that moves, they're all moving. So if I come over here, it's a big magnet. Josh, you give me a hand, spin that joker, and I hit it. Bam, locks it all together with a magnetic field. Disengage it, customer doesn't want AC, the belt's still spinning. Bam, engage it, actually runs the whole thing. Now, if you're dealing with that, you're dealing with some big magnetism. So you wanna get a feeler gauge, you wanna set up your actual clutch here at a distance between it, get the manufacturer specification. If it's too tight, it's gonna drag all the time, you're gonna have problems. If it's too loose, you don't have enough magnetic field to grab it. Now, what do I mean by magnetic field? Check it out right here. You can see the actual rotor, stator, and stator coil. It's a giant magnet, my friends, and it's actually pulling that plate down in there, and it's engaging it. But we need a compressor under there, Josh, so let's talk a little bit about compressors. The first one you see is an actual wobble plate compressor, and that actually changes the stroke. That's pretty cool. You see the top one up there? That's a very short stroke, so we're not compressing the refrigerant very much. Maybe the coolant demand's not very high. Then on the lower one there the stroke actually changes now true tech garage fasten josh you cut one away for us man this is the coolest ever yeah check out this cutaway so right now we have low demand so we have a low stroke on our pistons but if i have high demand all i have to do well the compressor automatically changes the stroke and look now i can move a whole lot more refrigerant through and i can increase the refrigerant flow for the higher demand Wow, so you're pumping more refrigerant. They need to do that technology on an engine. Hey, stand by, that's to come. You're gonna have variable compression engines as well. Nice. Also some different compressors. Josh, that one right there. That's a radial. Man, that looks almost like an old airplane engine. Yeah, and that's a fixed displacement. You can see the other one here. We actually have what's called a scroll compressor, and that's pretty neat because the scroll actually moves around on the inside. We take it from a big area to a low area, compressing it. Then over there, you see the actual vein compressor. Now, we use them in transmission pumps, power steering pumps, but veins actually take it from a high area, push it around to a tight area. That's once again, pressurizing that refrigerant. And last but not least, we have the actual electric compressor. A lot of electric vehicles, Obviously, we don't have a belt to drive at the motor, so we have to drive it electrically. It's like a giant starter. You can see the stator, the rotor, the scrolling, the whole mechanism there to run that electric compressor. Now, that's pretty cool. We need to scroll over, or maybe we need to stroll over and check out Dave. I think he's got the Lincoln going. We've got our Lincoln Town Car just about buttoned up to put the new fan in. Benjamin and I reversed the process we did when John and I were taking out the fan. First of all, we took our new fan from rockauto.com, slid it in, there's a couple of slots on the bottom, we just had to slide the tabs from the fan in there. Once we got that in position, we were able to swing the fan up. Now you had to align the holes to get the bolts in at the top of the fan. A little tricky, but not a big deal. Once we got those in, Benjamin and I ran them both in. Then I could swing in the coolant reservoir, he swung in the power steering reservoir at the top. Two bolts on top there, 
And we were all hooked up, ready to go, except for the electrical. Connect to that, and finally, one more step, John. Yeah, we got some stuff underneath there. I was wondering why you got a guy laying down here, <laughs> but uh, I forgot he was down there. He's been so quiet. Hey, Benjamin, you got that uh, bracket installed? All right. Well, Benjamin, we are sure grateful for you, my friend. You did a phenomenal job. Plus, Dave, I really don't want to get down there. It's rough down there. <laughs> he does all the dirty work, and we love it. Absolutely. What a great day we had today. A garage ed. We talked about compressors. We got the van up and running. Looking pretty good, man. I can't wait till next week. Dave, uh, one thing, though. I trust you, my friend, but hey, will you crank this up? I just kind of want to verify this repair. I like Let's to put do verify that. Ronald Reagan. <laughs> great policy to live by. Are you kidding me? Oh boy, all right, shut it off. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the, fan was, the fan was hiding the noise for the pulley. That's just great. That's all right, folks, ignore that. <laughs> we'll get the pulley taken who, care of. But who the, wrote in and guessed pulley? Because you were also right. We just couldn't hear it. Absolutely. Hey, we got a little work ahead of us, but you know we're out of time for today. So check us out on social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, I don't know, all over the place, man, YouTube. We got plenty of shows for you, but uh, we'll see you next week with more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Don't go anywhere. You got more work, buddy. I got plenty of work to do. <laughs> Good Lord. Production assistance provided by Chipola College in Mariana, Florida. Chipola was founded in 1947, and it was recently ranked among the top three community colleges in the United States. <laughs>